Whenever running up the floor, transition players should never run alone. A teammate should always be trying to turn a slow break into a fast break, or simply be there as an outlet if their teammate is pressured, a concept otherwise known as running in twos. Opposing teams will sometimes try to pressure up during a slow break, especially if they have the short change defensively. So defenders need to support each other until the ball is safely transitioned into the offensive zone. Players who run alone are at a much greater risk of getting double teamed, which opposing defenders are usually equally aware of. For two player out and up drills, Start with two lines of players on their proper floor sides or mixed, if advanced, on both sides of the crease at one end of the floor. The second player in line should be ready with a ball, and the first player in line should be ready without a ball. The drill alternates from side to side with the next two players set to go in the drill, waiting until the group ahead is at least halfway to the far end before they go. Variation number one is the basic outlet pass. The first player in line steps out to the shooter position and the second player to the same side crease position. The low outlet rolls or bounces the ball into the goalie and then runs or back pedals to the mid boards while the high outlet runs hard near the side boards in the outside lane towards the other end of the floor and not leaving the defensive zone until the goalie has control of the ball. The low outlet receives a pass from the goalie near the boards, cuts to the middle, and runs hard up floor towards center floor, making eye contact and then a good pass to the high outlet, who simultaneously cuts away from the boards on a 45 degree angle, going in on the net for a breakaway shot. The low outlet then becomes the high outlet after the other side takes its turn. Otherwise, coaches can make both players run together in twos, with the low outlet attacking the net for rebounds or loose balls after making the initial pass. It's worth noting that if there's one or no goalies, a volunteer player or coach can stand in place of the goalie making the initial outlet pass. You will also see that some of the drill reps start with lines in the corners, which we have gotten away from over the years in order to make this drill more game specific. The most common error is the ball carrier not getting to the middle before they make their pass, creating a possible suicide pass scenario. It's where both players are in the outside lane with the receiver in a straight line relative to the passer running away from them, looking back for the pass, which leaves them vulnerable to a vicious body check and should be avoided at all costs. No matter how many times you tell them, they seem to cut it short, not seeing the value in getting all the way to the middle before making the pass, only realizing once a team throws up a systematic pressure against them before they finally understand. Variation number two is curling at the half board, which is the exact same as the previous variation, except the player who receives the headman pass from the low outlet or possibly the goalie as a slight wrinkle, curls at the mid boards in the far end and hits the trailer with a pass for a shot, which is variation number 2A. The trailer may at times need to slow up in order to not get too close to the passer, otherwise players should be running at full speed wherever possible. The next time through the drill, players who were the low outlets should start as the high outlet and vice versa in order to equally promote the skill development in both roles. This action can also be done as a fake curl out at the mid boards with a subsequent re-dodge underneath, which is variation number 2B, which emphasizes that players still look to be a threat once they've run the ball deep. In this case, the ball carrier should first give the trailer a look and then take it to the net with the trailer attacking the rebound. Variation number three, the pick and roll version, is the same as the previous variation, except the player who receives the headman pass from the low outlet or possibly the goalie as a slight wrinkle, carries the ball up to the mid boards and executes a pick and roll with the same handed player coming late into the play. This is technically the last look in transition before getting into a set offense in what otherwise is famously known as the Peterborough pick. Variation number four is the bench side recovery, which is similar to the previous variations except after catching the pass on the bench side, this player cuts across center floor and runs the ball deep to the far side at the mid boards, with the original passer becoming a hypothetical trailer coming late off the bench, catching a return pass and running uncontested to the net. Alternate with both lines doing a separate pattern, switching what each line does in the opposite end the next time through the drill. Variation number five, light pressure, is another variation of the aforementioned drills. 
where coaches or volunteer defenders apply varying degrees of pressure after either the low outlet receives the pass, variation number 5A, and or the high outlet, variation number 5B, in which case the other players should support their teammate by attempting to create an open passing lane or possibly even picking for them in order to safely clear the zone. Another option instead of a volunteer defender is for the first player or players in line to play defense, later taking their turn on offense after the other side has taken their turn. Another coach can also stand in the middle of the defensive zone instead of defending the high outlet position, this time in the far end and forcing the ball carrier coming to the net to make a move, which is variation number 5C. This variation forces players to have to get to the middle before passing especially when you notice that they're continually cheating, which may also constitute the need for some sprints as punishment. Further, you will notice that whenever the low outlet gets the pass, they run it to the middle and pass it up to the high outlet if they get the chance. Otherwise, in a game, it's when in doubt, run it out. Variation number six, scrambled, is another variation that could be applied to any of the previous variations whereby players must start on a different side of the floor each time through the drill, with two mixed lines of lefts and rights, ultimately leaving an undetermined number of players on the wrong floor side and having to identify the situation while still getting off a quality shot. Variation number seven is the game to seven, which is used to add competition. Coaches should set up a game of lefties versus righties up to seven goals, with the losing team doing push-ups, sit-ups, bodyweight squats, planks, sprints, etc. Lastly, variation eight is the no drops, no misses game, where for every ball that is dropped and or misses the net during the drill, players have to do a sprint from one sideboard or end board to the other. For every goal that is scored, one sprint is removed from that total, with goalies having to run if the players keep their sprint total at or below zero.